no, I can definitively say the president's not a liar. And I think it's uh, frankly insulting that that question would be asked. Man, what the hell wrong with you? On June 8, 2017, while former FBI Director James Comey was testifying to the Congress, he implied five different times that he believed President Donald J. Trump to be a liar. Here is one of those times. I was alone with the President of the United States, or the President-elect, soon to be President. The subject matter, I was talking about matters that touch on the FBI's core responsibility and that relate to the President, President-elect personally, and then the nature of the person. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. When asked, the White House responded, the best way they know how. No, I can definitively say the president's not a liar, and I think it's uh, frankly insulting that that question would be asked. What's frankly truly insulting is how this woman expects people to be gullible enough to believe that. We need a fight for our country, and I believe Trump is elected by God to be the president of the United States. Yay, 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 yay. Well, okay, some are beyond help, but surely anyone watching this video knows it's common practice for presidents to lie. Some just do it more than others. According to the Washington Post, Donald Trump now holds the record as the president who lied to the American public the most during their first 100 days in office. Essentially, given the amount of time he spent in office, Donald Trump has lied to you more than any other president considering time served. He has lied during those first 100 days, 488 times, which comes to an average of 4.9 lies a day. Every five hours, Donald Trump tells a lie to the American public on average. Now, obviously there are some times where he goes a few hours, a few longer than that without telling us lies, but we have also had at least four days, according to the Washington post with Donald Trump in office, where he has told more than 20 lies to the American public. Now this Washington post article only refers to his first hundred days of presidency, but Trump has been a known pathological liar long before he ever took the Oval Office. But this is the media's big failure, is he says things like that, and there's no one who challenges him on that because they want to move down their agenda of questions that they want to talk to him about in those interviews. And so those things just come pouring out unchallenged all the time. Well, he's been, uh, he was the liar of the year, I believe was what PolitiFact gave him in 2015. Um, luckily, we do have some practice fact-checking campaigns. We've been doing it for 20, through 2012 as well. Donald Trump has really just stepped up and, and given us a lot more to write about, a lot more to check on a given basis. I mean, we've been watching every single debate and throughout them all. I mean, he keeps us no doubt busy we have to look, you know, to Marco Rubio or Ted yeah. Cruz or others to just try and, you know, fill the, uh, the space. But certainly Donald Trump has the lead. If only there was some kind of way of proving Trump's dishonesty. She has no natural talent to be president. She's very talented and she has a husband that I also like very much. Hillary Clinton was the worst secretary of state in the history of the United States. Hillary Clinton, how did she do as secretary of state? Probably above and beyond everybody else. Let's say Hillary is president. I, uh. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I think she really works hard, and I think she does a good job. Donald, true or false, you've said the government should pay for everyone's health care. That's false. You've never That's said false. that. Everybody's got to be covered. Universal health care. I am going to take care of everybody. Who pays for it? The government's going to pay for it, but we're going to save so much money on the other side. Donald Trump has a very real problem with telling the truth. And we are, by the way, the highest taxed nation in the world. Please remember that. I was against the war in Iraq from the beginning. Yeah, but you've used that vote that of Hillary's that was the same as Ms. Governor right. Pence. Many people have. As uh, the example of her bad judgment. You've Many people have, and frankly, I'm one of the few that was right on Iraq. Yeah, but what about he? Okay. He's entitled to make a mistake every once in a while. Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, I wish it was. I, I wish the first time it was done correctly. It's not even like he's lying about things that are inconsequential. I bring up something that happened on the show on Tuesday. Donald Trump apparently contradicting himself when he joined both us 
and our friends over at ABC by phone. And this is what happened. He talked to ABC first before their show, and they had asked him about that advertisement that showed women quoting things, actual quotes of Mr. Trump. So here's what he said when asked about that ad. Have you seen that, and what did you make of it? Well, you know, I, I have seen it, and it was a Romney deal. Okay, just a couple of minutes later, he appeared live on this show. Here's what he had to say. Thing to say. I have not seen the ad, so I would have to see it. I've heard about the ad, but I have not seen the ad. Nicole, does this matter? Do, I mean, when, when a guy contradicts himself within a couple of minutes. I don't know. Any, honestly, I don't know David Duke. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. This man is a sociopath. He has a very real problem with honesty. He said I was in favor of Libya. I was, I never discussed that subject. I was in favor of Libya. We would be so much better off if Gaddafi were in charge right now. Gaddafi in Libya is killing thousands of people. We should go in, we should stop this guy, which would be very easy and very quick. Stop him from doing it and save these lives. Hey, I watched when the World Trade Center came tumbling down. And I watched in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering as that building was coming down. Thousands of people were cheering. So something's going on. We got to find out what it is. I do want surveillance. And we did have some reports. Yes. Of uh, people celebrating that that day yes. while the towers were coming but down. But if if there had been thousands that, of I people, think I would have I would have I, I would have you known would that have for known sure. That. Yes. So Donald Trump is therefore not telling the truth. Well, I think what he's doing is exaggerating. Right? People were celebrating. He's right about that. I, but I, you're saying I a handful see, of people. I, I didn't see any evidence of thousands. Uh, uh, nor have I seen it since then, of thousands of people. It's fair to say that sometimes you exaggerate. I don't think I exaggerate any more than anybody else. Said every pathological liar ever. In fact, Trump exaggerates so much that a co-author felt the need to create a new term for him. Trump captured the story of his success in the book, The Art of the Deal. Tony Schwartz was the co-author, a decision he now regrets. From the very first interview, it was very clear that he had a exceptionally short attention span, easily grew impatient, and was going to be incredibly hard to interview at all. Schwartz said he had to find another way. Sometimes you got to know who to go to as opposed to whatever. But so Trump let him listen in on his phone calls for months. Is there any call that sticks out in your mind or are they all blended? Yeah, there is a call that sticks out in my mind. It's a, it was a call with a contractor. And he's going, you son of a... If you don't, I will. And I'm telling you, you'll never work again in this city. Boom! And he slams the phone down and he turns to me totally relaxed with a big smile on his face and he says you think it worked schwartz says that much of what he heard trump say was false i came up with this phrase truthful hyperbole which is you know i called it an innocent form of exaggeration now i can call something that i actually sold for two million dollars i can say ten million dollars and that becomes truthful hyperbole the problem is that there is no such thing as truthful hyperbole. The truth is the truth. Hyperbole is a lie. They don't go together. There's no doubt that the Donald is well aware he could say anything and will still have a following. One of the things people love about you is they believe you tell it like it is. Says it like it is. He speaks the truth. It's about time we have a man like Trump in here. They ain't afraid to tell it like it is, man. We like him. He tells it like it is. He says what he means. I, I honestly believe he's telling the truth. Now, the purpose of this video is not to make fun of the people who voted for Trump, as it is to support the ones getting off the train. As many have, knowing full well, actions speak much louder than words. 
Her papers went out to all her friends at the banks, Goldman Sachs, and everybody else. Today, the Trump administration announced its fifth straight high-profile hire from Goldman Sachs. Just a few days before Election Day, Donald Trump released his final ad of the presidential campaign. In that ad, Trump portrayed himself as a populist who would fight the economic power structure, specifically the big banks on Wall Street who had been robbing the country blind. It's a global power structure that is responsible for the economic decisions that have robbed our working class, stripped our country of its wealth, and put that money into the pockets of a handful of large corporations and political entities. What a bunch of BS. It's not even been a month since the election, and Trump has already exposed himself as a scam artist of the highest order. His administration is shaping up to be as Wall Street friendly as any other Republican administration. In fact, actually far more so. His pick to head the Treasury Department, Steve Mnuchin, is a second-generation Goldman Sachs banker who got rich off the foreclosure crisis and wants to repeal the Dodd-Frank law. His pick to lead the Commerce Department, Wilbur Ross, is a billionaire hedge fund manager who's been known to say things like, the 1% is being picked on for political reasons. His likely pick for head of the Office of Management and Budget, Gary Cohn, is the, the COO of Goldman Sachs and second in command to its CEO, Lloyd Blankfein. Literally the same guy who Trump used as an example of the nefarious global elite in his final campaign ad. The biggest question left is... So when will Trump voters realize they've been conned? Chin up, lads, as there is cause to be optimistic, since more are woken every single day. I know people who voted for Trump didn't vote for this. Just like when I voted for Barack Obama, I didn't vote for him to fucking crack the heads of Wall Street protesters while he gave bonuses to Wall Street executive assholes who wrecked our economy. I didn't vote for that. I didn't vote for him to take two wars and turn it into seven. I didn't vote for him to make George Bush's tax cuts permanent. I didn't vote for him to cut food stamps, which is what he did. I didn't vote for him to open up the Arctic to drilling. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> and that's when I know how you feel, because I know Trump voters didn't vote for this. This is why you voted. So this is why people wanted to smash the establishment. This is why a lot of people voted for Trump, because they were sick of shit like this. Their elected leaders getting together with corporations to F them over. And now it turns out he's doing the same goddamn thing. And people tried to tell you Trump was a con man, but at least he was pretending. So is Hillary Clinton. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. Good, honest, hard-working people, white collar, blue collar, it doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue, these are people of modest means, continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. Yeah, you know?